But anyway, those are the in-house notes. Now we got to talk about yesterday on this show. I spent a whole segment saying, where are the Young Bucks? Why are they not advertised for a show in their hometown? The last time they were in their hometown, it was announced the the Young Bucks versus Penta in Phoenix, and they did over 7,000 fans for a rampage. Well, here we are. They've got a dynamite tonight. And they were like 3,300 yesterday. There had been no mention of the Young Bucks, no match announced, not even an announcement that they would be on the show. Well, something like an hour after the show went off the air, started getting all these text messages, like I'm booking the show. The Young Bucks were announced for the show tonight. And you'll never guess what match they were announced for. Well, it was supposed to be the Young Bucks versus Penta and Phoenix which was the exact same match they did the last time they were in their hometown on Rampage. But Phoenix, I guess, could not get cleared, and so it is the Young Bucks versus Penta and Commander. So, at the end of the day, hey, better late than never, but I think the general rule should be, if you're going to somebody's hometown, shoot an angle for them the week prior or a couple of weeks prior, so that we have a big match announced for their hometown, especially if they're big stars. I'm not sure if the day before is going to be moving huge numbers of tickets. But hey, who knows? Maybe they'll get to 7,000 by tonight. But I, I don't think so. But I'm glad they finally have a match announced for the show in their hometown. Which should be great, by the way. Penton Commander versus the Young Bucks. Two luchadors at that. Yes, this should be quite great. In SoCal. So we got that. We got the Like a Dragon Street Fight, Kenny Omega, Chris Jericho, Kota Bushi, and Paul White versus Brian Cage, Powerhouse Hobbs, Kyle Fletcher, and Takeshita. We got a Red Velvet and Sky Blue TBS title eliminator match and John Moxley and Wheeler, Utah versus Orange Cassidy and Hook. And, you know, everyone's talking about Paul White because, you know, Paul White, he ain't moving very well. And in fact, uh, I think it was a week ago he came out, maybe it was two weeks ago, whenever whenever Jericho announced him as the partner, he came out on the ramp, and I just looked at that guy, and I was like, this guy is hurting, just looking at him, because he's, he's so, he's not in alignment at all, he's so crooked, and I've been crooked, and it sucks. And then, yeah. uh, you know, Dave went to Rampage, and, you know, Paul White came down to do commentary, and Dave said, man, this guy ain't moving well at all. So everyone's talking about, like, what he's going to do in this match, but... My guess is, I mean, very quickly he's going to brawl backstage. And you can pre-tape a bunch of stuff backstage. It's a street fight. So, I mean, look, listen, you got Kenny Omega, Chris Jericho. Even though he's not the old Kota Bushi, you got Kota Bushi. And Hobbs and Fletcher, Takeshita. I wouldn't be too worried about Paul White here tonight. I think everything's going to be all right think this was supposed to be uh sammy guevara's spot it was supposed to be sammy's spot mm. but sammy was not uh able to make it back look as long as the giant can channel his fake late father andre the giant and paul way can be picked up and slammed by powerhouse hobbs that's all i'm really looking for when it comes to that honestly that's it Powerhouse Hobbs needs something really impressive to do. It's got to be against Paul White. Paul White's not going to be a major factor in this match. In fact, I, I, I take back not a factor in the match, but when you look at it going forward, it's not like Paul White is going to be involved with storylines like everybody else is. So Hobbs getting a big visual maybe victory, but certainly a big power move on, on Paul White, that's to me the most important no, thing. I don't here. know if he's going to hit a power move. But you I would know, expect him to get it. Smoke and mirrors, then, dude. Then they should have Street put fight. somebody else in the match then, honestly. If this isn't going to be a thing where you use Paul White's massive size to make Powerhouse Hobbs a bigger figure and to give him something, then you have 200 people on the roster. You should have went with one of them. Well, you can still do that. I mean, we've seen many of these WWE, like, last man standing, and, you know, a forklift gets involved, and the forklift drops, you know, Big pallets allegedly on a guy, and then he gets onto Daniel Bryan and Kane. Yeah, stands there's over something him. you can do. <laughs> you know, I don't know how uh, how Paul White's mobility is compared to Andre the Giant in like the late '80s, but Andre couldn't move much in the late '80s. No, but we we went back and we watched all those Saturday nights main events, and Andre's all over like the uh, late '80s Saturday nights main events, 
And even though, like, even though he could barely move, that guy was so great. He understood being a giant. You know that Andre the Giant's like an all-time great and Hall of Famer in any Hall of Fame there ever really? has been? Man, really? you watch this guy, and it's like, he didn't need to do anything. Nope. And really, he didn't do anything. Mm-mm. But, like, every time he was on screen, you were just like, wow. Like, look at this guy and his his face. And, I mean, he was just so great at being a giant. So we'll see how, uh, how great Paul White is at being a giant. I mean, he's... Let me tell you something. On on Rampage, he didn't do anything except stand up and go like this, and the table exploded. And I was like, ah! So uh, I think it's going to be all right tonight. Could be wrong. Back in a moment, Observer Live. Back at the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervivi, also WrestlingObserver.com. So uh, we got a bunch of people here saying that Season 7, Episode 2 is the next Saturday night's main event we should be reviewing. So if anyone can confirm that, if we can get multiple confirmations, not from Curryhead, then we will watch that next. What's the main on that show, do you know? I don't know. Uh. New incarnation of TNA Wrestling, returning to Orlando, January 2024. Television tapings on Friday, January 19th, Saturday on January 20th, the Osceola Heritage Park in Orlando. TNA returning to Orlando. Alex Shelley, Moose, Josh Alexander, Eddie Edwards, Chris Saban, Tommy Dreamer, Ace Austin and Chris Bay, The Rascals, Trinity, Jordan Grace, Courtney Rush, Jessica, Giselle Shaw advertised for the tapings. So the return of TNA is so pretty upon much the us. roster is going to be there. With Saturday, January 13th being TNA Hard to Kill. Maybe I'll watch that show. I'll bet they'll have a whole bunch of flashbacks to those NWA TNA shows. Maybe they'll bring in, like, uh, Jeff Mortimer Plumtree. Remember that guy? <laughs> yes. Or the Johnsons. Yes, Maybe the Johnsons can That's get squashed. That's who he managed, right? That's who Mortimer managed. He managed a couple of guys. He actually managed yeah. AJ Styles, of all people, for a while. Yes, he did. Actually, at the very yeah. beginning, yes, he Pains did. Pains me that I remember this. I guess yeah. I only watched it a week ago. <laughs> but still, Mortimer Plumtree. Mm-hmm. What happened to that guy? What's he know. doing now? Abyss? You know, well, he ended up I know where Abyss there. is now. Working well, for yeah. WWE. You know, maybe a biscuit. Whatever happened to there, Joe Park, though? Joe Park might be I able to show guy. up there. Get the, still got the uh, Park, Park, and Park towel over here. Very influential figure there in the later days of Impact. And I swear, that was, they killed that man. I don't know how that guy is moving around right now, but I hope it is swiftly and without pain backstage at those WWE shows because... I don't think there was anybody there, maybe with the exception of AJ Styles, with the amount of risks that he took, but nobody took a bigger beating on a regular basis trying to get things over and trying to do things and and do everything that was asked of him than Abyss, than Chris Park. I mean, amazing, amazing amount of work he put in and amazing amount of punishment he took. Uh, Unfortunately, that didn't pay off uh, in the way that it probably should have if it was better run. Hey guys, did you love this clip? If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the join button and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show, all of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click join today and don't miss out.